In this video, I'm going to show you how to create alignment pegs in Tinkercad. Let's go. Okay, so for this video, we're going to be using Tinkercad. You can access that at www.tinkercad.com. And we're going to add alignment pegs to a model so that that model could be reassembled easily and aligned after printing. To start with, we're going to go to imports and import your file and choose a file. You can also import directly from a URL to save even having to download the file. One thing to note is that Tinkercad supports files up to 25 megabytes and the workspace in general has a file size limit so it's good to try and make your file as small as possible before you upload it. I've got a tutorial on how to do that in MeshMixer, reduce your file size and you can watch that first if you need to. So choose your file and import what you want. I'm going to be using this here, low poly bull. If you look at it as is, you'll see that it would probably need quite a lot of supports to print as is. So we're going to split it up to make each part print better. I'll do the example by taking off the bull's tail. Now, Tinkercad wasn't designed for doing this, so it's not a one step process, but it is pretty easy to do so. The first step I like to do is decide actually what I am going to take off, whether it be in this model the legs or chop it into half or two pieces and basically try to end up where the model doesn't have any overhangs greater than 45 degrees when we come to print. As I'm going to start by taking the tail off, I will try to rotate the model so that the cut will be straight down at 90 degrees to the workspace rather than trying to cut on an angle. In my opinion, it's easier to rotate the model than it is to rotate the cutting block in Tinkercad. If you click on the model, then press Shift and drag across, Tinkercad will duplicate the file. If you then press your Tab key, you can ensure that the files are aligned by ensuring that both the distances are zero. Click off and there are now two models exactly in the same place. If I click hold, you can see that there are indeed two models there. As a side note, Tinkercad does have this fit view to selected shapes or press the F key to center the model in the middle of your screen. It's really handy when you're moving around to be able to do that sometimes. Anyway, back to the process. We will select both models by placing the cursor in one corner of the screen, holding and dragging down to the other side of the model, and then that will select everything. We can then use the dual headed rotational arrows to ensure that the model is rotated as we require. In this instance, that means with the tail perpendicular to the workspace ready to be chopped off. After the model has been correctly rotated on all the required axes, it's then time to add in a cutting block so that we can start separating the tail from the body itself. We do this by dragging in a box. You can see we've got the whole functionality selected and then enlarging that box so that it selects the majority of the model, in this case, everything but the tail. Once you've got the one side, you can then duplicate the box in preparation for removing the tail. Once again, click the box and then press the shift key and move across. You can also press command C, command V or control C, control V on a Windows to copy and paste. After you've got two boxes, you're going to want to align them so that they touch at the point where the cut will be placed. When you're happy that the models do indeed align, you can then move the first cutting block out of the way, click on it, change the snap grid to five millimeters. That just makes it easy to see when you're putting it back and move it right out the way. We'll then just make sure that the second cutting block is only encompassing the piece that we want to be separated that is the bull's tail in this case. And so you can see at the moment it's currently touching a bit of the bottom of the foot. So we're going to have to drag the base of the cutting box up a bit so that only the bull's tail is touched. You can then click on the main body of the bull and the box, then click group and move the bull out of the way. And you can see the tail has been removed. Perfect. Now to separate the tail as a separate entity on its own, bring that original cutting block back into the frame and check that it only leaves the bull's tail outstanding. You can see here the foot at the bottom is also still left out, so we're going to need to use a secondary block to cut that bit off as well. Drag a cutting box back in, 
and stretch it so that it completely removes the rest of the foot like so then select the model and both of the cutting blocks and group together to ensure that the correct bit is left the tail you can see here that we've actually got a little extra chunk on the tail at the bottom over there and that needs to be removed so if we just undo command Z or control Z on a Windows and stretch that block over a bit more so that it takes out the rest of that foot once again select all and group perfect we've now got the bull and the tail separated and we're ready to add the alignment pegs so what we do is move the bull's body back over so that it lines up with the tail you see why I set the snap grid to five millimeters earlier as it makes it really easy to just push it back in and see when it's aligned in the correct place. It's then time to decide on a shape for the alignment peg. I would recommend using a shape that has a number of sides, for example, a square, because then it ensures that the alignment peg is acting as a directional as well as a positional alignment peg. A circle, for instance, could take any direction even though the position is in the correct place. So we go across to the cube in the basic shapes and drag that in. There we are. Now you can either use these toggles on the side or press the tab key and type in the dimension you require, like so. For this sort of thing, I find it's better to use the tab key and type in the exact dimensions because then you know whether or not the peg is going to be printable. You can see at the sizes we're getting down to here, really it's quite tiny for fdm and this is this model in general is probably more sized for resin printing however you could put the peg in small and then scale the model up to a larger fdm printable size later it's not the end of the world let's move our alignment pin over to the model so that it lines up with the tail and the body of the bull at this point you'll need to set the snap grid to 0.1 millimeters so you have much greater control over the movements and with that set you should find it's quite possible to get the pin aligned nicely with the model in this case i can see i'm going to have to shorten the peg a little bit so i'll take it down from 20 millimeters to 10 so that it sticks five millimeters each way then move that to the center so it's five millimeters into the tail and five millimeters out of the bull and then check the peg is completely encompassed in your model both sides i could see there that actually it was sticking out slightly from the tail and so i'm going to have to make it a little smaller still 1.5 millimeters on both sides should do it i can then go about trying to ensure the peg is perfectly aligned this time now i'm happy with the size so to do that, I will first switch the snap grid over to 0.1 millimeters again to get the precision back. I'll also set it to hole so that I can see exactly the point in which the face overlaps with the ball model. And I'll use five millimeters to move it five millimeters into the model in one go. Then switch back to 0.1 millimeters again to try and get the alignment as perfectly as possible. You can see that's pretty dead center at the bull's tail end now. Now that I'm happy with the alignment peg, I will duplicate it as obviously we're going to need a hole one side and a peg the other side. Copy and paste and then make sure these are aligned like so. One of them can then be shifted to box. At this point, I'm still thinking the peg looks a little bit too long, so I'm going to shorten it down from 10 millimeters to five millimeters, like so. We can then group the peg with the bull, and after ensuring the hole for the peg still lines up with the original peg, we can then move the tail back over, and then move the bull out of the way. like so okay the tail can now be moved over to line back up with the hole for the peg and before we group it's a good idea to add a little bit of tolerance into the hole to ensure that the printed models do indeed fit together 0.2 millimeters on either side is plenty of tolerance if you were going to scale these back up then obviously reduce that tolerance accordingly you can then go ahead and group the hole and the tail 
move it back over and you can see we've got one ball tail and alignment peg sorted voila i hope you enjoyed this video and find it useful for your own projects it's really handy for those detailed prints where you don't want to be dealing with loads and loads of supports or if you've got to produce a lot of models and supports really do add up then this process can save you a lot of time as always if you did enjoy the video do smash that like button and subscribe for future content once you're done with the file don't forget to export it and Tinkercad allows you to use either OBJ or STL exports. And there we go. I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.